Today let's recap the handstand push-up progression. So I'm going to show variations if you've got freestanding balance and you just work in the strength and also the base exercises for those of you that are still working up the strength and the balance and are new to the handstand push-up journey. Now I'm going to try and start with the easier variations but because everyone's slightly different but a good start in place is to make sure that you do have dips that are nice and strong. So push-up should be nice and easy and your freestand and handstand should be somewhat conditioned or in the process of being conditioned, it could be on the wall. Now with each of these progressions, like the pipe push-up, we want to try and mimic the real thing as much as possible. So I'm opening the shoulders in that start position, I'm taking the shoulders forwards, then I'm bending the elbows, taking head to floor, and then reversing it back up to that start position. Now notice that opening and closing of the shoulder position is exactly the same when I do a freestand inversion. So there's my shoulder open, my shoulder closes, then I do the push up and then at the top position I open the shoulder back again to that start position. Once we have that standard pipe push up we can make it harder by elevating the feet doing exactly the same thing. Then you can add the deficit side to it as well so if you've got a platform you can put your hands on, platform that you can have your feet on, hi Rosie, and then come down to a deficit back up again and obviously you can change the height of both the deficit for the hands and the elevation for the feet. Now quite early on I recommend that you start to work the deficit shoulder stand position which is the bottom of the deficit handstand push up. Now the best way to do this is to do L sit to shoulder stand. Now before you do that you need to understand that bottom shoulder stand position which is that, making sure that that's nice and strong. If you don't feel comfortable in that position you can play with boxes, you can play with p-bars, just have someone here to put their hand there or you could do it close to the wall, you can use lower boxes like the Ikea steps, go into that position and get very comfortable with that, moving it up to that position, which is your bottom of your deficit handstand push-up. Once you're comfortable with that or that, practicing your transition to L-sit and back again. Now, why do we need that? If you're gonna do things like crow to handstand, which is a great handstand push-up progression, understanding how the hips come up and the shoulders come down to help us into that position is really valuable. So that shoulder hip position that carries over from the L-sit to shoulder stand is exactly the same from the crow to handstand. Now we have the different variations of the eccentric handstand push-up that finishes either in the shoulder stand position if we're elevated with the hands or this bottom position here. So we hold there and come back out. Now obviously that is challenging from a freestanding point of view, a balance point of view, but we can do it up against the wall, understanding how to get into the position, where to start in that handstand open shoulder position, close the shoulders, bend the elbows, come down to head touches the floor, hold, and then come back out. Both of those variations can be done against the wall or they can be done freestanding. If you have that, obviously you need this as a prerequisite. So the freestand and hold on the box and you need the control to come down to that shoulder stand position and hold with control at the bottom. A nice way of practicing that is slowly entering to that shoulder stand position and stepping into the position. We have that crow to handstand like I mentioned a second ago. It's very, very good to enter and just do a partial concentric because so my head isn't all the way down towards the floor when it starts and it also kicks me up. So it's much easier than a full range concentric handstand push-up. So basically starting at the bottom and going up. So that crow to handstand is definitely much easier than like headstand to handstand. But if you do have the strength, that's a great concentric exercise to play with is starting in that headstand position and then pushing from there up to your handstand. Now both of those can be done back to wall. So crow to handstand and head headstand up. And we just can then use the wall as much as we need to from a balance point of view at the top. If you struggle with that concentric, so the up movement of the crow to handstand, you could go down either against the wall or freestanding and just practice that eccentric landing in that crow position at the bottom. We have the partial range, both freestanding and against the wall, but same principles apply. We wanna mimic that pathway. So starting the handstand, notice I'm gonna make a triangle by taking the head forwards, shoulders forward, head touches, come back to that start position. So I'm aiming to get the forehead to touch here. It doesn't matter what height I am, exactly the same there in the open shoulder position, come down, kiss the forehead, go back again. 
And if you need to, you can go chest to wall and slide the toes down the wall for that one. And then we can do full reps. So we can go back to wall. Don't do it at an angle like this, but this is so I can show the camera. So that open shoulder position, we close the shoulder. The foot's just helping me from a balance point of view against the wall, and then I can go back up. So that's a cool way of doing full repetitions with back to wall. We can do the chest to wall, full repetitions, head to floor. So this way around, toes on the wall. Now it is easier with socks and a smooth floor, but there I can come back up and I can slide the toes up the wall if I do have the socks and the smooth floor, or when I get to the bottom, I could walk the feet up the wall, which is slightly easier again. But again, make sure that you're mimicking that position. So open shoulders at the top, close shoulders come down, make the triangle between the head and the hands, and then push all the way back and open the shoulders at the top. And then there's a few different variations, combinations of each of those exercises, whether you're doing deficit, whether you're doing chest to wall, back to wall, partial range, concentrics, eccentrics. But if you're doing most of those movements, you should then be able to have a go at the full movement itself, just making sure that your balance is there, kissing the head to the floor, mimicking that position of the triangle at the bottom and going all the way back up to the hold at the top. Then once you're consistent with the full range of motion on the floor, head touching the floor, you can then jump it up to the deficit, aiming to get collarbone to touch the box. So this height there, and then push up from there, to back to your handstand. Now it's tricky to pick the right progressions and get the correct amount of volume, but what I recommend you do is pick some that you can get around five repetitions for around five sets. That's your working sets. Obviously, as you get better and better, you'll progress through the progressions. And then once you've done those working sets, then have a player around your one rep max working on that skill side. And there's pros or cons of doing the skill work before the working sets or after. If you're after a program for the handstand push-up, check out my app, link is down in the description, or check out the website if you're after coaching, www.pulltwyman.com.au. Stick any comments down below, and I'll speak to you next time. Thanks, guys.